My name is Francesca Kakwafos and this is Joy News Today. Muslims across the country are marking Eid al-Adha, a day set aside to mark the symbolic sacrifice and service Abraham offered to Allah. Hundreds of Muslims gathered at the Independence Square in Accra to observe the day with their leaders urging them to uphold peace. The message that we have is a package from the Council of uh, Zongo Chiefs, or called the Muslim Chiefs, a message of peace and unity. We want the Muslim Ummah, wherever they may be, they may try to be in peace with one another. You know, peace in our homes, in our community, and everywhere that we are. It's very important we do so. Because without the peace, without the unity, we cannot do much for our country. What does this day mean for you and Muslims? to commemorate uh, Prophet Abraham, may peace be of him, for agreeing to sacrifice his beloved child for the sake of Allah Almighty. It's obedience. To me, I look at this day as a day of obedience by everybody, you know. You know if a prophet of Islam has been obedient, why not also be obedient to our country, obedient to our law, uh, to the, uh, the leaders, leadership, Respect to obedience to our parents. That the word obedient, it cuts across everybody. So this day, I look at it, uh, we are celebrating a day of obedience for the leadership. Meanwhile, some Muslims have been telling Joy News how they are observing the day. Uh, this is the epitome of a sacrificing ram instead of a killing human being. Mm. By now, we, should, we human beings of the whole globe will have been killing every male child of our firstborn. This is a mercy from God. And the importance of it is that whenever we make promise, we should try to fulfill it. Idil Adha is all about uh, uh, strengthening your faith because uh, if you look at the history, behind it was when uh, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, told Abraham to send his son to to sacrifice his son whereby God was testing to see how 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 the faith is having you know which he, he did so this day is a significant is, is a significant one that we are marking um, so from here we, we were to told also that to how to grow in our faith. As, an, as a Muslim, you need to uh, strengthen your faith day by day because the challenges will, will be coming. You know, the Satan is such that whenever you try to do something, it comes around. So exactly that is what we strengthen our faith and also love one another. Yeah. We are commemorating uh, the exact thing they did. It's all about the sacrifice and then that's exactly what it or other signifies. So specifically for you, what are you going to be doing today? <laughs> it's just about the normal slaughtering and then uh, the feast inviting people to come over to come and enjoy with us. Today we are happy for this very day because today is the Eid al Adha, the sacrifice of Anabi Ibrahim, which is the Abraham you people call in Christian. And we are very happy. As now we are going home, we are going to slaughter our cows and sheep. So as we are doing it, we will be praising the name of Allah for this great day. Uh, the key message always is about peace. We talk about peace every day. Uh, we should be peaceful people. We should not fight. The killing that is too much, we should stop it and so on. Now, during the Eid celebrations, very often cattle, sheep and goats are in high demand. Well, my colleague Michaela Anderson has been to the cattle market at a venue here in Accra and reports. Muslims all over the world are celebrating one of the two most important festivals on the Muslim calendar, Eid al Adha, which is also known as the Feast of Sacrifice. And already scores of Muslims have trooped to the Avena Kakul market to shop for the day. I've been speaking to some of them who say they are thankful to Allah for making them see today, but they are not happy because they don't have enough money to buy kakul, goat, or other other foodstuffs to celebrate the day. People are not buying. They are buying the money not rich. Yeah. Uh, Things have become expensive then. Yeah, but uh, we, they bought it when we bought uh, the good at Boku. 
7 million. The thing will come here about 7.4. They go buy them 5 million, 6 million. So they lost me plenty of money. Mm. So this time around, you, the business is bad? It's bad, but too bad. Mm. It's too bad. But, so you have not sold anything at all today? Today, only one. You sold only one. And how much does a, a good cost? Uh, we get 10 million, we get 7 million, we get 6 million, we get 15 million. That's expensive. Yeah. So you are not happy? I'm not happy. Kura. The business is not fine. Ghana, I say, no money. Yeah. So that the market is no good. People are not buying? People are not buying. You have not sold anything since morning? No. But how much does a, a, a is it good or cheap? Ship. Ship. How much does a ship cost? Oh, six, five, seven million, go to ten, twelve lakh. So people, so people are not buying as compared to last year? No, people not buy that compared to the last year. The prices are too high. Why, and why are they? Why are the prices high? Mm, some of them are saying the safer is, has gone up, so the prices have changed. So we are looking to it. You are bargaining. Yes. So if my money, the one that my money will reach, I can yes. But how are you celebrating the day? Oh, it's very nice. Yes. We thank God that by this time we are alive. Last year, by this time we were here. This year we were here. We thank God. We thank to all African countries, Ghana itself. Yeah, we are praying for Ghana so that next year by this time we should be alive, peaceful country, and we wish our brothers and sisters happy year the same. We celebrate the day. The animals have come, the strangers too have come, they all enjoy about the salah. So all today, all the people enjoy it, but only say the town there is no money. But we thank God for our prayers. We thank God for all what the government too has did. But only say it's the, it's the disaster of, of the place. But still all that we thank God. We thank the government too. So, but there's no money in the system. But all of that, we always <laughs> thank God for what they have done to us. Let's now turn our attention to other stories. And statesman and former diplomat KB Asante says he is extremely disappointed after watching a Nazarimiel's film on alleged corruption by some judges, magistrates, and other staff of uh, the judiciary. Mr. Asante says he is confident in the move by the chief justice against the implicated judges. He, however, says there should have been criminal action taken against the judges because corruption is criminal. KB Asante says how the judges' scandal is dealt with will be a test case for the fight against corruption as a nation. I have known for some time that all was not well with the judiciary, but uh, the, uh, on the whole, it was a good judiciary. You could rely upon them. But what uh, happened, uh, what I saw the other day, was shocking. I, 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 I could hardly uh, believe it if uh, somebody had uh, just uh, uh, reported it. But to see it on, uh, on the screen uh, was uh, most telling and disturbing. So far, in my view, and I've written about it, I do not think that initially the matter was handled properly. In my opinion, this uh, uh, was a, a criminal case. They offended the law, and therefore, the uh, matter should have been investigated immediately by the police, probably the higher excellence of the police, and these uh, judges should be taken to court. Now, if uh, they are uh, uh, found guilty and imprisoned, of course, they have to leave the bench. If they are not, but the chief justice uh, found that their behavior was not proper, it was not becoming of a judge, then she could invoke that article of constitution and have uh, this inquiry which or rather get the judicial council to be involved so that she, she could get rid of the judge because under the constitution she could not get rid of the judge without passing through this uh, procedure but i think uh, uh, again i'm not a lawyer but uh, from what i know and i i, I, I followed i have uh, 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 dealt with uh, 
I've been treated on legal matters as principal secretary, and so I think I know a little bit about it. Uh, when a senior officer does something, you, if it's uh, a criminal, you give it to a police. Oh. To me, the uh, uh, court, the judges are not uh, equipped, uh, and the system they, is not equipped to uh, investigate cases. The police have that capacity, they should have that capacity and competence. Still on corruption, the executive secretary of the Ghana Anti-Corruption Coalition, Lindo Fori Kwafo, says corruption in the judiciary does not come as a surprise to the coalition. She is disappointed at the legal challenges put forward by some judges implicated in the Anas film showing judges allegedly taking bribes to influence cases. Madame Fori Kwafo called on the public to refrain from judgment and wait patiently for the process by the Chief Justice to deal with the scandal. A lot will change after people have seen it for themselves. It manifests, got to manifest in the judiciary. I say to be good. The judicial service already, the chief justice and her team have in the past dealt with incidents of corruption that judges have been involved in. We have had cases where big judges have been relieved of their positions and actually sat, if I can put it that way. Mm -hmm. And so this one will actually give um, the Honorable Chief Justice enough initial preliminary evidence to work with. And when people are able to see the results, we shouldn't be using the law to cover up. See, there's so much impunity in the system, and there are still allegations of corruption. And so they are information that is given to the judicial service and the chief justice to work with. So they have to look at it. And we are actually saying, not to look at it, but the chief mentioned that we are very happy with the test case. But we believe due process is being followed in dealing with the matter. And we actually say that they should not lack. The agency attached to the matter so far actually deserves commendation. And we only hope. I'm not saying that without the name was a shame and what and jail. He doesn't have the power to jail. If the judicial process law gives people rights. And he has the right to do so. We should be very patient in dealing with this matter because even though I'm an anti corruption advocate, I just don't see how we wake up one day and then we have put all the people in the video together, put them in court, and we are still the constitution and the legislations in this country have laid down the proper procedure to deal with each matter. Not too long ago, the teacher just said that in her first statement, said that the other people identified in the video who do not work for the judicial service have been referred to the appropriate I think the police was mentioned, the prison service was mentioned, and they are going to deal with them accordingly. It is six, six, you and I, the media society, to make sure that this matter does not die just like other matters. We have to keep the office of judicial institutions on their toes. Well, Joy News' Joy Michaela Anderson has been speaking to members of the public two days after uh, the premiering of the video containing alleged corruption of judges. Every area or every sector is corrupt because, let's say, uh, I'm a tailor. Uh, I know if I saw maybe one trailer, it's maybe 20 Ghana or 30 Ghana. I can tell you, if I see your stretcher, I can tell maybe it's 50 Ghana. That part also is corrupt. Now, in, you see, the system is very, very difficult to the extent that uh, if you don't use your mind to get something, you can't survive. But if I've come to your office and, and I need something, the Obama is asked me to bring something. It's one of their corruption. Everywhere is corruption. Even the market people is corruption. So the only thing we have to do is we have to pray so that all these things must be seized, so that we'll be free in the world. And then the youth that is coming, they have to follow our footsteps. Bureaucracy is number one. And the fact that it takes a long time before we are able to get issues settled, that's one of the causes of uh, corruption. Sometimes what they say is that sometimes when they've been gotten the job, um, you need to, I mean, give an envelope. I mean, they're brown. You put something in before they, they take you. In fact, it's all over. If you see people 
who are being corrupt. It's a matter of they don't really follow what the baker is saying. Because if really we are saying Ghana is a God-fearing country and all of us go to church and we go around, we are all working in these institutions and the institutions are we. So if really we follow the Bibles really and we say we are following the Christ, then of course it, uh, corruption will be a thing of, of the past. You're still watching Join News today with me, Francisca Kakra Foss. We'll bring you more stories right after this break. Welcome back. The program is Join News today. The third edition of the Joy FM debate was held on Tuesday night here in Accra, efforts by the National Development Planning Commission to formulate a 40-year development plan was a subject for the debate. Lawyer Kofi Bentel argued against the long-term plan, while the pathologist, Professor Ajima Bedua Kosa, argued for it. The end point is not Ghana at 100. It doesn't mean that everything that you write there, it has got to be attained at 40 years. Of course, along the line, so many things will be achieved, and we will build on that. So, in a sense, it's taking care of even some of the things that Kofi has said, that rolling stock five years, five years. We've done that. At least we've had how many? Four. Eight of, uh, no, four of those. Four four-year cycles. And this is where Ghana is. Let us be creative. Let us be imaginative. Let us get there and strive to work to achieve these plans. And I'm saying this 40-year development plan is feasible. Let us not sit down and assume that Ghanaians will be linear growths. We will grow from 1 to 2 to 3 to 4. Some people have done 1 to 2 to 4 to 16. Exponential growth takes place. We've got to open our minds. We've got to sit down and say that this country of ours, we are keen to make this country the envy of this world. And let's begin to work on that and stop just thinking that, you know, 40 years is something that, hey, I bet when I was 10 years, I never thought that I would be 50. How I've passed 50 and gone to 60, only God knows. It's just flown. 40 years is a very, very short time. And maybe some of us, even though we're 60, gee, some people move to 100, 103, we might be alive. And we might see along that 40 years a lot of our aspirations, a lot of our desires being achieved. Thank you, Ms. Moderator. Make it simple. Make it so simple that if somebody gets into a taxi at the airport, like we used to say about the Singaporeans, if you ask any taxi driver, they'll tell you the plan of Lee Kuan Yew. Any taxi driver will tell you that my government is planning for the next five years that my village will have water, our children will go to school, and we'll all make sure that we have enough of everything that is fundamental and basic to life. Not 40 year plan cast so wide that we cannot adjust to it. Like I said, we have 13 plans. Guess what? All of them were jettisoned. Because I bet you if we take a vote in this room right now, you will not be able to tell me the things that the Ghana Poverty Reduction Strategy 1 and 2 were trying to achieve. Nor the GSDA 1 and 2 were trying to achieve. They didn't have that power. Because a couple of people locked themselves in the room and came up with a set of things that are supposed to be our national plan. That is why the NDPC is purporting to have this plan binding on political parties. That also won't happen because it's wrong. The plan must have inherent force, such that no political party will be able to depart from it. Because if you do, you will lose the vote. If you were able to convince us in this country that we should pay 5% more VAT, and in the next five years, if, let's say we repeat it two, three times, everyone will get water, health, education, transport and communications, and another party comes and says, let's throw that away, they will lose. They will lose consistently until they adjust to that plan. So my point is, a 40-year development plan, as it's been sold now, is the problem, not the solution. What we need is to articulate a set of national strategies to deal with the existential problems that we deal with. In Imani, we've known them for a while. It's what we call WHEAT, W-H-E-E-T-T. -E -E Water, health, education, energy, 
transport and telecommunications. Make it simple so everybody's energy will be released to fall behind this. That is what we will achieve. The China and Co that we talk about, Google it now. They all have five-year cyclical plans. If you implement that eight times, you get 40. But don't tell me about 40 right now. Thank you. That was the Joy FM debate. Now, a task force of the Accra Metropolitan Assembly has pulled down more structures at Old Fadama. That's the slum uh, community that was demolished last June following the flood and fire disasters in Accra. Some of the squatters, however, have started returning to the community, necessitating the latest round of demolitions. There were three more excavators at Old Fadama on Thursday to continue with the latest round of demolitions at the former slum. The situation has been quite frustrating for the mayor of Accra, who has vowed to take every measure necessary to ensure that the area is clear of squatters. The exercise didn't seem to go down well with the slum dwellers, some of whom expressed their anger at the city authorities. I've lived here all my life. I managed to put up six bedrooms, which has been raised down by the tax force. What the mayor is doing is very dangerous because he has crashed my livelihood and what I have told for all these years. Now some of us are tempted to go into armed robbery. Look at the first demolition that took place. It took place in Ramadan. And this one too is happening during our festive period, the eighth, which comes of tomorrow. What, have, what crime at all have we committed? We want the mayor to take it easy with us. Now some of us are tempted to go into armed robbery. We want the mayor to take it easy with us. Meanwhile, five of the suspects who were arrested on the previous day appeared in court on Wednesday morning to face charges of illegal encroachment on public property. But in a rather speedy trial, the suspects were fined 60 cities each and released back into the community by the magistrate court. Coming up next is business. Two-thirds of Ghanaians are living on unstable jobs, which threatens their livelihoods. That's contained in the final assessment report on Ghana's efforts at beating the Millennium Development Goals. Labour economist Dr. William Barboating has been sharing these details and more. It's supposed to be those who are working, but they are not earning enough to be able to uh, take good care of themselves. Vulnerable employment are those people who are working just to survive. And we have about 68% of all people in Ghana who are working to be in vulnerable employment. And these are the people who are in own account work and contributive family worker. Because vulnerable, and if you look at the report, we also made analysis of vulnerable employment and working poverty rate. You see that working poverty rate is higher among those in vulnerable employment than those who are in non-vulnerable employment. However, let's say that we've gone from, since 1991, vulnerable employment has declined from 80% to the current 68%. So we've been able to do very well, and that is, has also translated into reduction in working poverty rate and reduction in poverty incident that we, we did. But we still have it to be very, very high compared to some other countries. You go to South Africa, Namibia, and so on, vulnerable employment is within the 20s. And that, if you're able to reduce vulnerable employment, it means that you are increasing productive employment and you are making people work to earn enough to take care of themselves. Currency analyst Derek Menza has advised government to sell its debt management strategy to investors as a means of raising the $1.5 billion US dollar euro bond. Well, I think the biggest catch is um, the fact that we are restructuring our debt profile, which is very, very, um, from an investment investor's point of view, you don't like to find, um, be financing um, capital expenditure with short-term um, debt or, or treasury bills for that. So it, it is... It is a bit frightening when we say we are racking up a lot of debt, but if you if you decouple the debt component and you look at where the, how the debt structure looks like, then that is encouraging because now we are looking at more long-term debt. Therefore.
the capital projects, the capital expenditure that we have, the roads, the the, uh, the other places that we need to development projects we need to do, um, I think that government will have easier cash flows to deal with it. And I think that it's more of a sustainable um, story to tell an investor, to tell them that, well, I'm going to pay you back, I will be able to pay you back um, from these developments that I'm doing, rather than say that, oh, I'll pay you back through short-term treasury bills. What if it gets to a point where investors don't want to put their money in treasury bills again? And then you have a problem. So the debt structure, um, it's one key point that government can, can keep on um, highlighting, especially when um, crude oil prices are down. That is no no selling point for you anymore. So I think that um, that's a key component that government should be looking at. And just so that will also water down the the, the stories going out or the issue about a high debt. Uh, the main thing should be the structure of the debt. President John Mahama has commissioned four helicopters delivered by the Chinese government as part of the Ghana Gas Infrastructure Project. The China manufactured fleet, estimated at $100 million, forms part of the Chinese Development Bank's credit facility to the company to enable it monitor and secure installations across the country. This has become necessary as the country positions itself to expand and utilize its oil and gas resources for the benefit of the economy. Speaking at the ceremony, President Mahama said the aircrafts will, among other things, be used to deal with the security threats, including piracy. That's it for business. This afternoon's commissioning of four new Z9 helicopters for the Ghana Air Force is historic. It's historic because it represents a unique collaboration of two state institutions, the Ghana National Gas Company and the Ghana Air Force. The aircrafts purchased from the Republic of China as part of the China Development Bank Credit Facility for Ghana Gas is meant for gas, gas pipeline surveillance, security of oil installations, and allied operations, but will be maintained and operated by the Ghana Air Force. This collaboration reflects government's policy to encourage interdepartmental partnership to advance our developmental agenda and our agenda for transformation. The aircrafts will enable Ghana Gas to tackle any challenges and threats to production of gas offshore and also place the company in a good stead to secure its gas production environment. The helicopter would assist with general security of all oil installations in our offshore oil fields. I'm happy with this acquisition because it will enhance our maritime security, anti-piracy operations, rig-bound medical and casualty evacuation, search and rescue operations, aerial photography, riot control, and uh, it's even capable of traffic management. Ada, and welcome to the entertainment news segment on Joy News Today. Hey. My name is Mensa. Ah, and my name is Kubolo. <laughs> um, the first mm, entertainment news item, Freddie Mewe, known in the Volta region as Fred Mewe. Um, the Francophone singer Freddie Mewe is in town for the African Legends concert scheduled to take place on Saturday, 26 September. 2015, not next year, this year. Joy News caught up with him and asked him to explain why his first album is still what many people know him for. I think uh, everybody in the world uh, is nostalgic. Uh, you, you, you remember all the time, you, the first time you, you, you did something. That's why, it's normal. Uh, uh, this album, uh, uh, opened the way for me and uh, is the album who show me to the crowd here for the people uh, to the people here so it's normal it's normal and so many 
came after, everybody know the new one, but the, the first one is the most important. If you didn't open my way, I couldn't, you know, drive on the, the you know, on this expressway. <laughs> it's very difficult to talk about me because I'm myself. And uh, talk about myself is mean that I'm not humble. <laughs> but anyway, if you say I'm legend, I appreciate. And uh, I think also because uh, in my country, Cote d'Ivoire, I showed also the way to the young people, to the new generation, and now we have so many uh, music there, like Coupe de Calais, like Zouglou, and all this music come from mine, so I'm a guide in my country, so I'm a legend. And I full. This is my match, my and my journey. A visa viva dia, e não o mais de maneira zene é fé. Maminha moa dele, maminha moa dele, maminha moa dele, maminha moa dele. You are a jaloue. This is the white handkerchief. Yes, it seems um, Joy TV is going to open. Joy News is going, it seems Joy News is going to open a, a French segment so that we can understand Fred Mayway more when he speaks. Or he should just speak three because we know people in Ivory Coast also speak three and then that will come on maybe I don't TV. Um, let's go to the next thing. Smoke weed. I'm not telling you to do that. That's just the title of the story. Hip Life artist KK Fosu has disclosed emphatically that 90 percent of musicians are into drugs hey but only the good ones huh what are the good drugs uh, you i guess you don't know mm -hmm. is that what you people do though i mean i'm you, not a monk yes that's true <laughs> Way back when you talk about marijuana, we are the artists, and then so far as you being an artist or you want to be, you know what I mean, you, you will definitely pass in certain angles. But marijuana, fine, everybody take it. I will say that 99% of Ghanaian musicians use it. But for cocaine, I don't know, and I never set my eyes on it before. So for cocaine, and the people talking about KK, no, 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 no. Drugs is far, far away from KK for so. And if I, I had ever entered into drugs, I wouldn't be here today. Look at how my, I'm looking. I'm, I look fresh and neat. <laughs> you know what I mean? So your drugs, the Nyamin Pengu, it's not part of me. This is KK. I just took a time to relax. That doesn't mean I can't do music or drugs is taking over. No, that is not me. And let's watch out. I just bounces back for like some months this. And I know most of the, 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 the musicians in the game are panicking. But they know what, it, what I can do. And that's why some people just frame those stories like KK cannot come back again because he's, he's doing drugs and stuff. No, that's me. I'm panicking. I'm panicking. <laughs> Pastor Paul. Yes. What do you have to say, please? I have a story about you to tell. A story about me? You're in the news, my friend. Are you making this up? No. It says, One Love Kubolo says he is considering a career change and intends to apply to become a judge. Oh, yes, 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 take a listen. yes, yes. This is true. I'm thinking of taking up um, court duty to be a magistrate. Wait, what are you thinking of? Being a judge, there's a lot of like vacancy at the court, right? What makes you think there's a lot of vacancy? Oh, some pornographic film that just came out. That Which pornographic movie is that? It's Directed by Anas. Do you have any comments? Ah, yes. I feel if I was one of those judges and I decided to not take bribe, mm. I would arrest the attempting briber. Mm. So I don't feel good about the judges who did not take bribe that did not arrest mm. the attempting bribers. So, so I want to take that job I see, yeah. to arrest anybody who tries to bribe me if the bribe is not enough. Mm. I have a comment which is just that I'm upset that they cut me out of that video because I'm also there. Oh, you also did? <laughs> yeah. That's true. That was... Okay, so on, 
On Hip Life, the entertainment industry in Ghana for some weeks now has been saddled with the debate of who introduced Hip Life. Lord Kenya has sent a message to all claiming ownership of Hip Life. That might be the one who got the pen moving. You understand, sir, because we were doing rap. But he does the beat. He, the, 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 the idea behind the whole thing is him. So if you do music, do music about me. I'll tell them that all this thing is not important. You know why? Because there's no nothing high about your high life. There is nothing hip about your hip life. What is more important is Christ's life. For Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through him, Jesus. John 14, 6. Uh, what is so high about your high life? High life. Mm. What is so hip about your hip life? Yeah, hip. With Jesus, it's possible. Is that, right? is that a hip thing? No, we. But Christ life. You shall not compare. Lord Kenya is set to celebrate his fifth anniversary in God's ministry on the 28th of October, 2015, in Kumasi. <sighs> yeah, what do you have to say about that one? Christ life, baby. Christ, Christ life, life, baby. Yeah. Christ. Um, no, I, I, I see what he's saying about the origination of rap mm -hmm. and that's what's going on with Ambule, everybody. Mm -hmm. But nobody really knows and Reggie hasn't really claimed the word and the coining of the word hip life. But he's the person who put hip life on the map and really branded it and, you know, has yeah. that mantle, the mm -hmm. hip life mantle. So that one, there, yeah, I, I think it's a waste of time, though, going into all that. Yeah, you know? it seems like a, a wormhole. Of yes. an argument. Please introduce yourself to us. My name is Jules David Bartkowski, also known as Pastor Paul. Where are you from? I'm from the United States of America. Is that the place where the president now needs Yomo to make his hair black again? Yes. Okay. Yes. I see. I've heard of there. Yeah, it's a small place. Yeah, but some people know of this place. Okay. Yes. Okay. And please, why are you in this country that belongs to? A sleeping farm animal. <laughs> Me, I am here to premiere my film, world premiere, Pastor Paul. Oh, I see. Yes, and I think you know. Is that a film I also act in as an actor, acting in a film? Yes. In that film? Exactly, yes. Oh, You're which is showing Saturday? Saturday. At Saturday, Alliance? At Alliance Francaise uh, at 7 p.m. Oh, wow. Followed by a concert. A concert? Yeah, they will be well attended by both of us. Good. Fusho Ogundipe, Fusho Ogundipe, the Nigerian, mm, from Nigeria. oh, musician, yes. I see him. Mm. Okay, you know, I think we should give them a small sample of the songs that will play there I think that day. Idea. So can you please bring me that yes. Jintai? Yes, which song should you do for them? I think we should do a song for Lord Kenya and Christ's life. Yeah? Yeah. For Lord Kenya? Yeah, okay, no problem. Mm. I wish I could kill every Christian because I love them and send them right on up to heaven for enjoyment. Cause when I look at this planet Earth, in fact, Christians are suffering. So I was, but Kenya was sweating. Working hard every day, slaving away for their pay, for their pastor, for his offering. And I admit, I will not cry. I will be far from a rose. And I admit, I will not cry. That's a big fact. Very soon, very soon, very 
Thank you so much for watching. This is the entertainment section on Joy News. Well, that's it for Joy News today. You can log on to myjoyonline.com for more news. To all Muslims, we here at Joy FM say Barikade Sanla. Thanks for your company. Bye-bye.